Happy Monday after the 4th of July weekend, and I hope you had a great weekend. We certainly did with our daughter and our two grandchildren that, that came with her, and uh, we just uh, thoroughly enjoyed floating around the lake, and uh, we just uh, in, enjoyed the long weekend, so I hope you did too. We're in AD 28. We're in event 17 out of 55 for that year. We're in the book of Matthew. We're looking at the Sermon on the Mount which is only covered one other place, which is in Luke, and it's covered so much less than what's in Matthew that uh, there's no comparison. So we've been in Matthew now for probably eight or nine subjects that are not covered in Luke for the Sermon on the Mount. And uh, today we're looking at one of my least favorite subjects, fasting. <laughs> <laughs> Just take one look at me and you know that fasting is not one of my active activities. But anyway, uh, Sermon on the Mount covers fasting and it's only a few verses. Uh, we're looking at verses 16 through 18. But there are some commonalities with what we looked at in both um, the prayer subject and the giving subject. And that is the fact that we're not to do these things for man. That is, we're not to do them to be noticed. Uh, and I think that's very significant. Uh, we're not supposed to pray uh, so that we can be seen or heard uh, for the praise of man or the um, glory of uh, yourself, uh, whether it's giving or whether it's prayer. Uh, and here again, it's said in fasting. So he says in verse 16, uh, uh, just don't uh, do this for show, don't don't uh, and don't go around bragging about the fact that you're fasting. And I've seen lots of people do that. Verse 17 says, "Anoint your head and wash your face." In other words, uh, again, don't let any outward appearance uh, show people that you're fasting. Reference might be Second Samuel chapter 2, verse 20, that you may want to look at. And in verse 18, it says, uh, do this in secret, just as your father is going to see it in secret and reward you in secret. Now, fasting is covered 69 times in the Old Testament. So you see, this isn't some little obscure practice. 69 times in the Old Testament. You say, well, probably all in one book. No. In 20 different books in the Old Testament, we find, so all but 19, uh, it, it talks about fasting. In the New Testament, it's not just an Old Testament thing. We find it 37 times in 12, 12 different books. That's 106 references to fasting. Now, there's a total fast where you eat nothing and drink nothing. Those are usually only 24 hours uh, and sometimes only 12 hours, sometimes only from sunrise to sunset. And then there is a food fast, which would say that you can drink liquids and those can go on for longer periods of time. But the one thing I would say to you as a disclaimer is don't ever enter into a fast uh, unless you consult with your doctor. Fast can be very dangerous for people that have special medical conditions, such as diabetes. Uh, I can tell you that I have not fasted very often. Uh, when I did, I, I fasted for a very serious need, whether it was a friend's health or whether it was a very important decision we had to make as a family or some other very, very important situation where I wanted God to know how serious I was about my prayer requests and uh, made sure that uh, uh, that I was in the health that I could fast and uh, sometimes it was for multiple days uh, and it was a liquid fast uh, where you know, took in no food but was able to drink liquids uh, and a couple of occasions I actually did a total fast but only for a, a limited period of time. What is it good for? It's good to show God how deadly serious you are about whatever your prayer petition is. And it is something that, uh, again, is not to go around bragging and saying, I'm going to fast. 
feel sorry for me because I'm in a fast. Uh, I can't eat anything today because I'm in a fast. Uh, it's not for uh, bringing attention to yourself. It is to show God how deadly serious you are about a prayer situation or about a circumstance in your life or in somebody that's very dear to you's life. Again, it's not something that I've done frequently. Uh, some people do this frequently. I know that God honors it, especially when it's done not for the notice of man and for bringing attention to yourself. Uh, if you're in that kind of situation where you have something you're getting desperate about, then uh, by all means, check with your doctor to be sure that you're in physical health for fast and then uh, let God know, but let him be the only one that knows that you're fasting because you're deadly serious about a particular prayer request. That's my thought for the day. God bless you.